Hey, Frankie, it's Adam. Yeah. Hey, uh, it's good for me to come by today to shoot another video. Yeah. Where are you at? I'm at home right now. Will you? I could leave right now. Take it, man. I'll be here. Okay. See you in a bit. Yeah. Right, bye. <laughs> Looks like we're going to Frank's. I just want to show you guys what this guy's really like. He's. It's not like the videos you've seen. Uh, elsewhere on YouTube, so, it, it, this guy is a—he is a very colorful character, and that's what I'm going to try and capture a little of today to show you. Right, I'll ring in. All right, awesome. Okay, so the number one question that we get is: Is the mob still in Vegas? I'm asked that question quite frequently, and I tell people the same thing over and over again. There is no more mob in Vegas. It's wiped out. If there were a mob in Vegas, do you think I'd be living there? Because there's always some guy that would think he could do something or want to be recognized. Not that that scares me in any way, shape, or form. But there is no mob. To answer that question, definitely not. What about the uh, strip clubs and, and the cash run joints like that? You, you know, don't... there's going to be corruption anywhere you go. So if there's corruption in these strip joints, these bars or whatever it is, it's done on a one-to-one -one basis. It don't mean that it's an organized group of guys that are muscling these people. I doubt that. There's too many people out there that can't wait to drop a diamond on you and call, well, now it's more money to call a cop. So somebody uh, wrote into us and asked us about Joe Lombardo. So can you tell, uh, is Joe Lombardo, was he funny? Was he really a clown? Was his personality? Please tell. Joe Lombardo was never called Joey the Clown to his face to start with. He loved the clown around, little tricks and stuff like that, annoying things. You couldn't retaliate back because he was temperamental, touchy, he was touchy. You want to meet Joey Lombardo? First time I met Joe Lombardo, I went on a big robbery with him. I didn't even know him. I was with Tony Splatcher and Dickie Garman and three of, uh, and two of Joe's friends. There was six of us. It's in one of my books. Anyway, it was a big, big burglary of a bank, safety deposit boxes, the vault and all of that. That's the first time I, I met Joe. And that's the first time I found out that Joe was uh, running crap games. When I say crap games, that means dice games, illegal run dice games. They used to do them in alleys and back of stores. And he was in charge of doing that. And he also used to hand out juice money. And when I say juice money, somebody goes bust the trunk, crabs, dice. He'd front of money and they'd had to pay interest on the money to keep him rolling in the game. Uh, I didn't know that when he went on the score with us until after the robbery. <clears throat> then I was notified by Tony that Joe was connected to the outfit. And at that time, he worked for a guy by the name of Johnny Bananas. Now, there's two Johnny Bananas. This is the older Johnny Bananas. The other one I'll talk about, they used to call him Johnny Bananas or Johnny No-Nos. All right, he was from Elmwood Park. This Johnny the Ban Bananas was from Grand and Ogden. So Joe worked for him. And then eventually he died. And then Joe started working for Jack Cerrone. All right? And then he started coming up the ladder. Now, how I realized that Joe was getting, ah, well, let's put it like this. He had his nose in the boss's ass like anybody else. And when we made that score, we all had to kick in 20% apiece. I didn't want to. But Tony said, you know, if we don't kick it in, we're going to get whacked. They'll take the money from us. I had to go along with it. You know, I just thought that we just made it $750,000 robbery. I'm 18 years old. This is big. Anyway, you know, what happened was I wind up with 50 G. Now getting back to Joe. Oh, didn't one of the guys in that robbery not kick the money up? Yeah. What happened to him? You know, he was killed. Now who killed him? I have no idea, but I know that he was, Killed. I didn't even know. Believe it or not, these were Joe's friends. They weren't my friends. And I told Tony, I says, 
Tony, I never stole with people I don't know. He said, don't worry, they with Joe. Joe's a good guy. See, Tony knew Joe. That's how I got involved. So this guy, because he didn't pay up his 20%, I'm assuming your wife, yeah, they corked him, you know, they whacked him. Don't even know his goddamn name, to tell you the truth. And uh, he's disappeared. And that's basically about that. So back to Joey uh, the Clown, which again, we would never have called him the Clown. Huh. Yeah. As I said previously, nobody there, everybody had a nickname. Everybody did, but they didn't call that person to their face that nickname. Like in other words, I had a nickname. It was called Brahma, Brahma Bull. Nobody called me that to the face unless it was Tony Slatcho talking to me personally. But I never called Tony Tony the Ant because that's slang for Anthony. And that's bullshit. That was not a nickname for him. His nickname was the little guy. He knew that. Mm -hmm. But nobody called him the little guy. Joe Lombardo, the clown. Same thing. You know, uh, would you would you call uh, when, when you were talking with Tony, would you ever say to Tony, hey, we gotta go see the clown? Would you, I could do that. Yeah. I could do that. If I ever I had to refer to Joe Lombardo as the clown, and I told Tony or somebody, I'd say, hey, Tony, let's go talk to the clown. And a lot of times, them expressions were brought out there because in case there were lip readers or we were talking on the phone, we, hope, we were hoping that they didn't know who the clown was. But it, like anything else that gets out of the bag, somebody's going to tell them something. The cops are going to hear it. And that's just the way life is, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you got a Bentley. Yeah. What color? I don't know. It's like a dark silver gray. It's a beautiful car. Uh, the only deep? thing is you lose a lot of money. Damn cars, they depreciate bad, but it's a nice car. Are you taking people around in it on your tours? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I was going to do it uh, the other day. I was going to take the two people in the car. But my driver, I have a driver, and he he sort of talked me out of it. <clears throat> he said, you want people all, what if they burn the seat or drop some stuff on your seat? You know, you'll kill them. And I said, yeah, I said, I better not take the, the Bentley. So I just took my SUV. How and were they, the tours yesterday? It was the day before. The day before you had yeah. one? Okay. And the tours are always good. I always get good people. I don't. I've never had a bad person on my personal tour. And there's another tour that I'm involved in too. It's called Vegas Specialty Tours, and uh, they. <laughs> I mean, it's cheaper. But you've been you've been a consultant for the Vegas Mob Tour since the since the inception, since the beginning of that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Actually, Robert Ellen and myself <clears throat> started that. Maybe I know. Uh, maybe 15 years ago. 2006. Yeah. It was I, a, I was the first tour guide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got him interviewing me. <laughs> he was the first interview guy. I mean, the first tour guide that I met. This big, big guy. And he's uh -huh. standing in the bus. And he's got this hat on his head. And he's dressed in black. And he's a comedian. <laughs> this is supposed to be a... Uh, uh, historical, historical, factual, factual, authentic. whatever it is. It's supposed to be some serious. And he's up there cracking jokes. Well, do you know what I said? I remember it made you turn a couple shades darker. A red <laughs> one. I said, I said, oh, Tony had the Gold Rush jewelry store. And Frank and the guys, they used to take the jewelry there. And Tony would resell it. And his motto was, if you like buying it the first time, you're going to love buying it the second yeah, time. That's a gummy man. <laughs> Because I dealt with the with honesty, you know. Yeah. And he was he was doing what he thought was good and funny, but I didn't like it. And I corrected him. He corrected me. You you threatened to kill me. In front well, of I him. corrected you three times. Before that, I gave you three chances. <laughs> then I told him, "Hey, you know what broke the? Remember what broke the straw right the back? The straw that broke the camel's back was when I held the book up, Colada, and I said." Now, this book, Collada, was written by Dennis Griffin. Yeah. Oh, oh and that was it. <laughs> That's I mean, I wrote the book. book. <laughs> he was my co-author. You know, and he's a good writer. This yeah. guy's the best writer. As far as I'm concerned, he's the best writer out there. He's done 27 books. Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah, he's the best. 
But uh, and then I got off the bus and I thought, well, I'm, you better quit messing with me, man. I'm telling you, this is not a game. This is a serious story. So I looked at Robert Allen and I said, fired his bum. And I was fired the next day. And he got fired the next day. And, you know, best I felt bad after I done that it. That was the best thing that happened to me. Yeah. You <laughs> heard him? That was the best thing that happened. But I felt bad. You know, I don't want to do that. But the guy says, he's going to blow this, this nice, wonderful thing that we set up to do. But, you know, people like jokes. Too. I'm a serious guy, actually. Especially when I'm working. You know, you got to be serious in my business. Or even the business I was in before. <laughs> So anyway, no, he owns the business, this guy. He owns the business. Don't worry, I get a piece of the action. Don't <laughs> yeah, you worry. Do. Yeah, you and do. And if you ever want to go on it and you can't afford me on my personal tour, call him. He might make a deal where I could get on that bus and be with you. Or hit the subscribe button. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to hit that. I keep on forgetting about that button. That, I can't pronounce it. Prescribe button. Subscribe. How do you say that? Subscribe? Said subscribe, yeah. Uh, shoot me, yeah. Subscribe. It's all right, Frank. You know, yeah, come I on. Can't. Man. English, my English sucks. It's okay. But yeah, don't stop me from making money. Just be you. You got a Bentley, man. What's it? What's <laughs> the? What does it matter? <laughs> yeah, that thing loses a lot of money on that car. Yeah. Huh? But it's a fine car. So what's the craziest thing you ever had happen while you were doing a tour? You had somebody come on the tour or that oh, knew yeah. you? Oh, yeah. Or... You know... I get a lot of people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, every country you could think of. Sometimes it, I'm amazed that people come from Africa and stuff like that. You never think they'd know that. But I got this guy, and I guess he was trying to impress the five people he was with. I put him in my SUV. He said, before he got on it, he said, I might be a little pesty. Bear with me. He said, I said, well, I'll give you a shot. I said, don't be too pesty. Because I do, I like to do things on a serious note. So we're going around. And he didn't, he, every time I said something, he would interrupt me. And that throws me off. I forget what I was saying. Remember, I'm 81 years old. I don't have that mind solid anymore. So I'm going, this guy's busting my balls. So my driver, Lewis, he knows I'm getting mad. I heard him whisper it to himself. He says, here we go. So, and of course, that gave me a little nudge by saying that. So the guy kept on doing it. So I turned around and said, listen, I'm going to give you one more chance. Will you shut up while I'm talking? I'm trying to entertain these people in the bag. I know you're excited to be with me, but you're ruining the store. Okay, I'll stop. It took him five seconds, and he interrupted me again. I said, pull the effing car over. Get out of the car, I told him. No, I, I said, get the shut up. And he says, oh, okay, I will. I, I took that to keep him quiet. And then I apologized at the end of the tour anyway. I said, I'm sorry. I'm looking out for your friend. They're your friends. And the guy said, I know, I know. I, he said, I'm just so excited. But I try to, I, you know, I try to give person, the people that are with me, my undivided attention, you know. And so when people bother me, I, I don't hesitate to tell you off, okay? And I'm very political, too, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't get into the politics yet, okay? okay? We'll see if the people want to hear about the politics, all right? All right? Um, but but um, you, your life was changed in 1981. Yeah. Whether you wanted it to or, or not, it changed on you. Yes. You birthed this jewelry store, which your gut told you you shouldn't have done. You shouldn't have been doing it that night. You didn't like the crew, the uh, Sal Romano. Uh, but hey, have you ever been in Bertha's? Oh, yeah. Have you gone in there? Yeah. Have you really? Have you yeah. talked to the people there and been like, hey, oh, I'm, I'm no, trying to I ain't going there bragging. No. So I went in there. there look or look. I, I had the guy, I had a Rolex watch. And I went over there and I was looking for another watch. So I spotted this beautiful Mavado, and it was beautiful. I mean, it was like twenty eight hundred. The Rolex I had on was like six thousand or seven. I forgot. So I uh, looked at this Mavado, and the owner is a little Jewish guy. He come over and he says, "You like that watch?" I said, "Yeah." Meanwhile, he's eyeing my Rolex, and he said, "I tell you what, I'll do. I'll make you a deal." 
He's I'll give you the Movado and seventeen hundred cash for your Rolex. I said I didn't come here to trade my Rolex in. And he, ah, come on, come on. I said that ain't gonna happen. So finally he's talking, talking. He comes in the room, and he's got a roll of money, a big wad of money. He puts that on a scale. He said I didn't even count this. I said yeah. I, now you're gonna tell me how much is there. I'll tell you how much your weighs, he said. He put it on there, he told me to wait. I forgot. It's actually five thousand. He says, How about five thousand? And I'll give you the the Movado and just for that Rolex. Evidently the Rolex would have sold a lot quicker. Now I could just turn it down, right? I had the Rolex for seven years. It was an old watch. So I, I took the five thousand, I got the Rolex. Now, about, I don't know, three years, four years later, the crystal, I dropped it, the crystal fell off. I fell off of it. I said, wow, they got good crystals. It didn't break. I'm going to get it on here. So I go back to the store. He's not there. Salesman's there. I said, hey, I bought this watch here. The guy don't know me. The guy didn't know me. The owner of the store didn't know me, too, when I did that deal. So... He said, you know, they write a slip up. <clears throat> he said, what's your name? I said, Frank Collada. He said, what? I said, you got a problem with the name? He says, the Frank Collada? And this happens to me a lot. And I say, yeah, it's, it's me. Look at you want to pinch me? Yeah, it's me. The owner of the store comes in. He's a little Jew guy. He used to own a delicatessen, and that's the same guy that made that deal with me with the watch. So he don't know Frank Collada, but the salesman that works for him tells him, you know who this guy is? And he says, no. He says, this is Frank Collada. And the guy says, oh, my God. He said, we brag about you all the time. And then I looked over there, and I said, where's the vault? And he said, well, it's behind that door. I said, I know, because they had a door, a false door, and a wall in front of the vault. He said, we talk and we show people the vault. He said, I get your action there. You ought to give me a piece of your action. Hey, laugh, you know. So I said, you can't fix my watch. I got to send it to Mavado. I said, well, oh boy. So I leave. I'm telling you, I ain't bullshitting you. Three days later. Now, I know that building like I know my own self and all my clothes. Three days later, I got a tour. I'm coming by there. There never was a camera on that building, the outside of that building. If there were, it may have been one. I counted them. They put 13 cameras up. I said, this guy must think I'm going to rob the joint again. It's not as the guy true. You could go by there and look at it. 13 cameras around the whole building. And I can bet you they didn't, they didn't put none on the top. <laughs> it's most important. I prefer going through the roof. That's what I prefer going through. It's very simple. I don't want to teach anything. You people, but it's very simple. Okay, so um, I'm hearing banging still going on. So I'm going to go get some microphones, and then we'll do another episode. Okay. How's that sound? Sounds great. Okay, so everybody hit the... Hey, don't forget, hit the, the subscribe button. I'm going to get another word for that. Subscribe button. It must be my plate in my mouth that making me not pronounce that right. Anyway, I got a cold. I right. like I'm talking to you with this cold. <laughs>